you met me deep in my soul. Thank you for tuning into the Speaking the Truth in Love broadcast. This broadcast, WFPM Gospel Radio Station, is made available because of the visionary and recipient of the 2016 MLK Service Award, Pastor Elmer R. Hess Sr., co-pastor of First Pentecostal Family Worship Center. I'm your radio pastor, Tino Smith, founder of the Dr. Tino W. Smith Ministries and CEO of Brino and Truth Enterprise. For the next 25 minutes, I will share with you the principles that will harness the power of the seed effect, which is the operating system that has been running your life for better or worse. Use this system to your advantage and you truly can revolutionize your life. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy these life-changing principles. Good afternoon, Radio Land. You're listening to the voice of Dr. Tino W. Smith. I am your radio pastor for the next 25 minutes. Today's topic is the power of generosity. The power of generosity. Today is Wednesday, April 27th, 2016. Just to remind everyone, we are worshiping in the beautiful sanctuary located at 3142 Capitol Southwest across the street from the Omni Credit Union. The service starts at 10 a.m. Please be a part of a beautiful service. You're listening to the Speaking the Truth in Love with Dr. Tino Smith. You can visit us on the website at www.drtinowsmith.com. You may tune in to WFPMRadio.org, WFPM 99.5, Christian Radio. Tune in every Wednesday and Thursday between the hours of 4.30 to 5 PM. The Battle Creek weather forecast tonight, cloudy with rain developing after midnight, low 41, winds east at 10 to 20 miles per hour, chance of rain 80%. Thursday morning, cloudy, periods of rain early, high 53. Winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Chances of rain, 80%. So definitely get your umbrella out and your rain gear. Something was very unique today. Today is April 27th and I have over 2,000, close to 3,000 friends. And there's only one person that is actually celebrating this day on this birthday. So I'm gonna do something special. I'm playing a different song for you. Brother James H. Boyd Sr. I'm giving you a special shout out, sir. This is your special day. This is your special day to thank God for living another day. So if you know him, if you know where to reach him, if you know how to contact him on Facebook, address, email, look him up. Let him know, hey, your name was a shout out today. Brother James H. Boyd Sr. Happy birthday. And may the blessing of God be with you real, real all right, let's continue on with these great and exciting blessings that God has uh, 
uh, been doing for us I've been receiving all types of phone calls and emails so thank you thank you for tuning in to this broadcast also we will be going live on Periscope on Fridays I will be eventually making that known to all of you it's going to be a weekly program on Periscope so let's uh, stay tuned and I will make myself available and the time for this event. All right, the power of generosity. All right, now you know last week we was talking about this whole thing about the building the barn and uh, what was the real total loss or the moral of the story. The real moral of the story is this. Listen to me. This is important to remember this one. Those who eagerness to store up material goods outpaces their willingness to give will suffer a complete and total loss when their time runs out. I'm going to say that again. Those who eagerness to store up material goods outpaces their willingness to give will suffer a complete and total loss when their time runs out. In other words, the landowner suffers a total reversal of fortune at death. He lost everything in his life and had nothing to show for it in the next. You better believe me, there is going to be a next life. He didn't just lose his life, he lost everything he considered life. Everything that he considered life, he lost. He was rich in this world, but poor toward God because everything that came his way was used, watch out, was used for his private consumption. My God. In the words of Jesus, the Bible said he was called a fool. What you say? Bishop, that's what Jesus said. Jesus called this man a fool. Mm. A fool that most of us would have envied had we known him. Isn't that amazing? Mm. Church people. Think about who we've been admiring lately. Think about who you've been posting on Facebook. And, and I'm not a hater at all. No, sir. I'm not a hater. I respect talent. I admire people's creativity. But remember, we do not want to die lonely. See, a fool that many of us have a tendency to emulate but a fool just the same. See, that, that's, that's what this man was who, who built this barn. He just kept building things for himself. The landowner was foolish enough to believe that an abundant of stuff meant an abundant of time. No siree. I mean, just lately, y'all, in the last several, what, 10, five years, great, great, artistic, talented, gifted entertainers left this world before the age of 60. Mm. I can name three right now before the age of 60. Just lost Prince, lost Whitney Houston, 
and Michael Jackson. I know there's more, but I'm making a point. I'm sure they would have thought they would have lived at least to be 60. So in the story, he was a fool not to give to the less fortunate from his abundance, knowing that the day would come when everything would be taken from him, including any further opportunity to be generous. Lord have mercy. So the parable of the rich fool does two important things for us. What, what are they, Bishop? What are they? Number one, first, it defines greed from God's perspective. And number two, second, it offers a simple remedy. The problem with God's definition is that it's a bit broader than most of us are comfortable with. The problem with his solution is that it unavoidably practical. Simply stated, the solution is a habit. A habit that has the power to free our greed written hearts. So I know we spent some time on that review and but that's kind of close this thing out on that greed. So we're going to talk about the next two days, the power of generosity. Here's a question we all need to ask ourselves from time to time. Are you ready for it? Ask me, Bishop. Why do I have so much? Somebody say, Bishop, I'm not the one. I barely have anything. Then that's another subject for you. But for all of you, one more time, why do I have so much? Now, I realize you don't have as much as you want. See, few of us do. Again, the desire for stuff is like the rest of our appetite. It can never be fully or finally satisfied. Did you hear that? Listen to me. Your appetite, it can never be satisfied. But just for a moment, shift your focus away from potential possession and income and consider your actual P&I. Oh, we get ready to talk about some financial terms here. Uh, let's talk about it. PMI, P&I, think of all you have. Think of all you have now. Chances are it's more than your parents had at your age, okay? Think now, think, think now. Think of all you have, chances are, is more than your parents had at your age. Perhaps it's considerably more than most people in the world can lay claims to. So again, why you? Why do you have so much? We need to slow down occasionally and force ourselves to wrestle with that question. Somebody say, why? Why? Radio Land, why? Because a consumer-driven culture keeps us laser focused on what we don't have. Think about it. This culture we live in, it keeps you focused on what we don't have. 
and focus on what we don't have leaves our heart vulnerable to greed. Did you know that? Because we focus on what we don't have, it leaves our heart unto greed. I remember teaching this class and we talked about the issues of the heart and I said, who all had grieve in the beginning of the lesson and very few raised their hand. No one, no one, no one see themselves as being greed. But how? Because as long as I am on a quest for more, then when more does come along, I assume it's all for me. See? See? As long as I'm living for the next purchase, the next upgrade, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm waiting for that new upgrade, the next whatever. I'm consuming mentally what I hope to soon be consuming physically. I'm anticipating future consumption. Now, that kind of attitude leaves us little margin. What's the lesson called for generosity? So when you think like that, you don't have any room to be generous. And before we know it, we're building bigger barns or a bigger garage or calling somebody a hey, Bob, build me a barn. Uh, Bob the Builder. Bob the Builder. Barn Builder. Hey, hey, Bob, we need you to build us a barn. We have so much stuff. Lord have mercy. So let me ask you again. Why do you have so much? See, the wealthy landowner believed he deserved it. He didn't recognize the divine providence behind his crops. He didn't recognize the crops were growing for a reason. Assuming you aren't as short-sighted as he was, and I hope you're not. Listen! Let's assume you're not like this land owner. And let's ask the question this way. Why has God provided you? Listen, Radio Land. I'm asking you, preachers, deacons, mothers, fathers, Sunday school teachers, professors, white men, black man, Asian man, Latino man. I'm asking everybody this question. I'm asking the world this question. The Republicans, the Democrats, I'm asking everybody this question. Why has God provided you with more than you need? If that's an uncomfortable question, Somebody had to pull over. They said, oh, oh, let me pull over. Let me ask, answer that question. Why has God provided you with more than you need? If that's an uncomfortable question, consider this. In the past, when you didn't have enough, were you hesitant to question God? about your lack. I know a whole lot of people. They get in prayer lines saying, Lord, I need, I need, I need. Oh God, Lord, help me. Oh God, help me, bless me, help me, help me. So in during those times when you didn't have enough, were you hesitant to question God about your lack? You probably didn't hesitate at all. You let him know immediately that you were in need. 
And if you're like me, you will let him know that you expect him to provide for you. I believe that. The Bible says it, so I believe it. God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. And when it when he came through, what did you do? When God came through, what did you do? When God helped you send your child to college, when, when God helped you get that automobile, when God helped you get those things and, and build that home, and when, when God did come through, what did you do? You thanked him. You may have even shared your story with a few folks or in testimony service. Help me, Holy Ghost. You may have said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus. That's for those churches that still have testimony services. I think it's good to have them. As long as ain't nobody testifying, it's good to testify. So now that you're on the other side with more than enough, why don't you question God about that? In other words, when you didn't have, you said, God, help me. Now, since you have, you ought to be still talking to God saying, Lord, what should I do with all this surplus? Huh. See? See, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, when we don't have enough, we wonder why. Why not wonder when we have more than enough? When God start blessing you, I mean, come on, y'all. You, what you need for cars for? Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody said, you're getting in my business, Bishop. What you need all that stuff for? Just maybe God has blessed you to help somebody else. Somebody keeps saying, well, the Lord's going to show up. Maybe the Lord is trying to show up through you. My God, my God. So next week, I'm sorry, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about the surplus dilemma. Yep. <laughs> yes, there's a dilemma sometimes when you have a surplus, especially if we don't allocate the funds correctly. God's been good to us and God expect us to be generous with our blessings. I want y'all to think about what we're talking about, the power of of generosity and I need you to look around and ask yourself the question why do you have so much and like I said earlier if you're one that don't have you keep talking to God God will talk to you back he'll open some doors and when those doors finally open I need you to keep asking God okay Lord I have a lot <laughs> what should I do all right we just want to remind you we're going to be at 3142. You are invited to be with us at 10 a.m. We wouldn't be more excited and we anticipate God doing some awesome things on May 1st. It's the first month, y'all, first day of the month. It's our first fruit, first worship. Why don't you start the month of May right? by coming to the house of the Lord this Sunday at 10 a.m. And every time we meet in the future as well, we will always be a church that invites the Holy Spirit to have his way in our midst. Now, when the Holy Spirit comes through, there's some results. Lives will be changed marriages and relationships are restored past hurts are healed and people growing closer to christ in their personal relationship with him now i'm asking you would you join us won't you join us on this journey of real people 
with real problems encountering a real relationship with Jesus. Come see what it's all about. My wife has a exciting program that we implemented while we were in Indiana. It's called YES, just Y-E-S. It represents Youth Enlightenment Service. YES provides targeted biblical instructions that focuses on each child's developmental ability. My wife is dynamic with these children. That's a gift that God has given her. Now this service is for children ages three to 12. So now you come and there's a time during our service where we'll dismiss those young people. Your children will be sure to love it. So again, visit us this coming Sunday, May 1st at 10 a.m. I want you to visit me on the World Wide Web. I'll be downloading these broadcasts and other things that I think will help you develop in your relationship with God. That's at www.drtinowsmith.com. I'm on Twitter at tsmith222437. I want you to always remember, as I say all the time, copy diem, which means seize the day, take advantage of this day, and remember it's a fact that God and Christ are one. God bless you. I will be back, same station, same time, tomorrow, Thursday. Be then. God bless you. You met me deep in my despair. Thank you for listening twice weekly here on WFPM, your miracle radio station. You may visit us on the World Wide Web at drtinowsmith.com or our Facebook page, Kingdom Builders International or Tino Smith PhD. If you have a church home, we appreciate you tuning in with us. If you do not have a church home and are seeking one, we invite you to prayerfully consider becoming part of Kingdom Builders International, where we let God, love God, embrace others, and touch destiny. Our goal is to make your experience so special that the next time you visit us, you will bring a friend. Our services are held every Sunday at 1030 a.m. I leave you with these words, and they are so true. No one has ever seen, no one has ever heard, no one has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And I'm worth fighting for